Good evening, everyone. So glad to be with you in the house of God tonight. Thanking the Lord for the opportunity to give back in the pulpit. I've been through some tough times, but the Lord has been with me and helped me. I thank God for a church that's prayed for me and my family and stood by us. Looking forward to try to attempt to preach a message that's really been burdened on my heart. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles, and I ask you to please be understanding if I had to stop and get my breath. I don't mean to, but I might have to. Matthew 25, look at the first verse through the 13th. Very familiar verse of scriptures about the 10 version, but read it with me again. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto 10 virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took the lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise say, it not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready, they that were ready, went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterward came also other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, you neither know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. We've heard so much about the rapture, and you know, we, 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 we understand what's taking place. And I could preach for weeks on these, ten, uh, these 13 verses. I could start out at the beginning about how that they had a responsibility. That they knew that they were their responsibility was to meet the bridegroom, usher him in with their lamps, and bring glory and honor to him. That even though they didn't know exactly when he was coming, they needed to be prepared. There was no excuse that would be acceptable. That they had to keep their lamps trimmed. They had to keep all burning and the light shining bright. And then when the cry went out, they had to rise immediately and run to him. And of course, I could talk about the lamps getting low on oil. I could tell you that when it all got low on the lamp, that it started smoldering. And us be known to them, there were soot on their garments, on their garments for the virgins. They were spotted and blemished. And by the time they went and got to oil, it was too late. The bridegroom had come and took the five wives, went into the bridal chamber and shut the door. And when the five foolish came and said, Lord, Lord, let us in, he said, I know you not. It's because their garments were spotted and sooted. They had to prepare themselves and made themselves ready. And it was assuring themselves that they had everything in order. And that's the day we're living in today. Jesus says, as it was the day of Noah, so shall it also be in the second coming of the Son of Man. For as in days of Noah, they're eating and drinking and married and giving in marriage. In other words, they were going about their daily lives. They were going about life as though it was usual. Even though they were in a depraved state, and they knew they were. Even though they knew that their imaginations were evil continually. Even though for a hundred years, the preacher of righteousness, he cried out and told them, Behold, judgment is coming. Cleanse yourself. Cleanse your heart. But they looked at him as foolish. They ignored him. They mocked him. They had no time for him. Their life was too subtle and so too, too comfortable. They were concerned about judgment. And that's the day we're living in now. Just as Noah preached and cried out righteousness, we in the body of Christ do too. Every minister that's born of God, who has the fire of God burning in him, is crying out that the Lord is coming, the rapture is going to take place. And we better make sure that no spot or blemish or wrinkle. We better make sure that we are looking for his coming. 
And we're examining ourselves and putting us on ourselves on the scales of God to make sure we're not wanting. There needs to be a fear and a trembling, realizing that in a moment we're going to stand before an almighty, holy God. You see, the problem with this modern-day church today is that they have lost the fear of God and the fear of the Word of God. We no longer honor God's Word. We look at adultery as though it's just another lifestyle that's acceptable. We look at fornication, our children having, uh, committing, having sexual intercourse outside of marriage and then having babies out of wedlock. We just ignore it and find honor in it and glory in it. But the whole time, it's a damnable sin. They'll be left behind. Adulterers, fornicators, all liars, we tell lies as though it's nothing. But all liars will be put in the lake of fire. We look at the lifestyles today of the homosexuals and the LBGT. It's contrary to the word of God and it's not proper to preach. But the fact is they'll be left. They might demand equality. They might demand that they have the opportunity and the right to be equal to everyone else. And they can come in and do. But they won't demand it before God because he's just going to leave them. They'll be left behind for judgment. And as we cry out to a world, we're trying to get them to repent. We're trying the world to get to realize they're blinded by the God of this world, that they're deceived, they're, they're dead in trespasses and sin. Listen to me. Everyone who's not born again, the blood of Christ washes them white in the snow. Everyone who don't have their name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life is damned for hell if they don't repent. There has to be a conviction power of the Holy Ghost to grip them and they have to cry out. But the fact is, for so long, you've ignored. You've slammed the door of the Holy Ghost. You've quenched the convicted power. You've turned away from God. You've mocked God. You unbelievers and sinners, you've mocked the Word of God and the Spirit of God. You've shunned away the truth of the gospel. You've hardened your heart. You've got calluses on your heart and your stoned heart. Until you no longer fear God or the word, you don't fear death and judgment because the enemy has deceived you and blinded you to believe that you're okay, that it won't happen, that God's a loving God. But he don't want you to know he's a holy God, a God of righteousness. But to the church, we're crying out that they which do such things as Paul talked about in Galatians 5 and 19 shall not inherit they have an inheritance, but if they do these things, they lose their inheritance. He's talking to the church, the saints. We're crying to the body of Christ because you're mingling with the world. You're allowing yourselves to be deluded and polluted by the world and their mindset. You're acting and behaving. Your lusts and your desires and the carnality of the flesh is overtaking you until the church in these last days has lost its identity. The church no longer has influence. Let's be honest, the church no longer has power and anointing because you can't buy it, you can't purchase it, you can't produce it, you can't work it up, you can't dance it down, and you can't shout it up. No, 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 no. It comes from the favor and the pleasure of God. From the It comes from them saints that are washed in the blood of Christ and their garments white as snow and their heart pure and their hands are holy, lifted up and they walk in fear and trembling and reverence of the word of God, the spirit of God. They understand that they're mere worms and only by the mercy of God were they able to even be born again. And they welcome the convicted power of the Holy Ghost. They crave for the spirit of God to move in their midst. They want the Holy Ghost to anoint them and use them and be working for the kingdom of God because they realize all that's going to matter in the rapture is what you've done for God's kingdom. All this world and worldly things and assets will not matter. <coughs> Please forgive me. And so for those who are lost and blinded, those that are in sin, those who ignore, to those who sit on the pews, they become calloused. They become like robots. To those who 
Don't know what it is. And remember the liberty and the joy and the peace of God. That have lost the hunger and desire and the quest to worship and praise and magnify a holy God. Realizing where he brought you from. Realizing how dynamic he's been and how loving and compassionate and how unworthy we are. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. I want you to realize some things tonight in this short message, in this simplistic message, but I've got to get it off my heart. I want you to grasp what God's trying to tell you. What will it be? What will it mean to be left behind? We hear that, left behind. The rapture takes place. Jesus narrowed it down. He said, no man knoweth the day or hour. No man knoweth the hour. Be also ready for the hour you think not. He's trying to get your attention. When you think everything is kosher, everything's all right, the rapture is going to take place in the twinkling of an eye. You won't have time to make things right. When God shut the door on Noah's ark, it was too late. They ignored everything he said until the rain started falling, until the water started rising, until the floods started coming. And then he immediately ran to the shelter and beat on the door, begging Noah to let him, let him to let them in. Knowing they were going to perish, but it was too late. Noah didn't shut the door, neither could Noah open the door. And some of those beating on the outside with their children and their babies and their, 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 their royalty and their authorities and their possessions, some of them were the siblings of Noah. But he couldn't open the door. It was too late. They were left behind. So I want to go down a few things. What it will mean to be left behind to the unsaved and to the lukewarm in the body of Christ. To those who are looking, those who are not examining their garment, those who are not making sure there's no spot of blemish or soot, those who are complacent and carnal-minded, those that are okay that we don't feel and sense the moving of the Spirit of God. That it doesn't rip their heart out and break them and they, they weep during the night because the altars are barren. We're not seeing souls and sinners saved. Those that aren't concerned in the body of Christ that have their loved ones that are committing sin, abominable sin, damnable sins, and they ignore it and they're mute. They're not burdened and weeping before God. Because they think everything's all right. They've been deceived. They've been blinded. They've become numb, calloused. they become spiritually hypothermic. Don't realize there is no life. They're like Samson. The Spirit of God has departed from them, and they don't know it. I'm talking to you tonight. I want you to realize one thing that will mean, it will mean that you missed the rapture and you left behind is that God's love and grace and the Spirit will be gone. Can you fathom that? For 51 years, God has been my refuge. For 51 years, He's been my foundation. For 51 years, He's been my shelter. For 51 years, He's been my provider. For 51 years, He's been my healer, my deliverer, my closest friend, my counselor, my answer. For 51 years, He's been everything I ever need. I can't fathom, imagine the moment uh, when I realize if I was to be left behind that I can no longer feel the Spirit of God, that the Spirit of God has departed and has vacated this earth, that when I cry out, there's no response. It's like crying to the rocks and you get an echo back, but it's not the voice of God, it's your own. I can't imagine living in a world where I can't sense and recognize and feel the love of God. That love that is so supreme. That love that is without variance. That love that reached down and reached down way down in the mire. And found me when I was in sin and bondages. And picked me up and cleansed me. That love that just wouldn't let me go. I've told my wife and family when I leave this world. If I leave you for the rapture, the only thing I request is that they sing one song. I don't care how many others, but one song and one song. And that is he never gave up on me. He never gave up. He just wouldn't give up. 
He kept seeking and searching and seeking and searching. And one day I reached out and cried out. He convicted my heart 51 years ago. And thank God he did. Several times from youth in the house fire on down up, I should have been drowned in under to other toil. And, and, and many other times I should have died. But God kept seeking me and searching me and preserving me. Why? Because his love is so supreme. And he knew that if I'd ever opened my eyes, I could understand a love that's so supremely dynamic that I can't live without it. I can't imagine not feeling the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God. I can't imagine living in a world where I've got no comforter. I've been through some low valleys. I've been through some heart-wrenching times. I've been times when my heart has been so shattered that there's not a cardiologist in the world that can pin men back together. But in the love and mercy of the Holy Ghost comforter, he would strengthen me and renew me and help me to stand up. But you, my friend, that are left behind, you'll no longer experience the presence of the Spirit of God. You'll no longer sense the, the love of God. You'll never longer sense and realize the mercy of God, that mercy that reached out and loved you, that unmerited favor when you should have perished, but God saw good in you. God saw in your wretchedness and your crookedness and your worthlessness that he could make you a jewel in his kingdom. What an awesome God. And then it'll also mean because you're left behind that the Antichrist is going to arise. He's going to take domain over the world, the one world monetary system. You know, we were about socialism in these present days and the government of America and socialism and communism in other countries. But you can't imagine what it's going to be like when the Antichrist takes rule and reign. He'll mesmerize your eyes and your heart and your mind. He'll persuade you. He'll be so persuasive that even after a thousand year millennial reign, he'll still rally troops that want to go and fight against the almighty God and his armies. He'll rise up. Churches will have nothing but vacancy. They'll be using yard sales and using them for open buildings because there'll be no spirit. There'll be no liberty. There'll be no conviction. The Spirit of God is gone. It means not only the Antichrist rising up, but God's people will be gone. I want you to know that I stand here today victorious. I stand here with joy in my heart. And I want to confess to you as much as I love God. And I've always given Him 100%. I've always given Him everything in me. I've never ever thought about quitting. Never ever thought about going back. I love Him too much. And I want you to know that I can't imagine, and I want you to realize, I could have never made it on my own. I thank God that there was people of God in my life, people that could pray for me when I was weak, people that could pray for me when I was discouraged, like Snip Bryant and the altars of the Dallas Church of God, and the whole world seemingly was caving in and didn't know what to do. People that could lay hands on me when I was sick, and feel the healing power of the Holy Ghost bring wealth and health to me. People that would speak encouraging words and, 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 and just push me and stand by me. I thank God for the family of God. I've been forsaken by many, but I thank God for the family of God. Hallelujah. But there won't be no more people of God. That precious holiness mother of yours, she's gone. That grandma that was old-fashioned and you look at it and just kind of smiled and smirked at her standards. She's gone. That preacher that would preach hellfire and brimstone and try to get you to an altar and shed tears on your shoulder as he hugged you and begged you to please turn your life around. He's gone. That mom and dad that wept every night and called your name out as you laid in the jumping stupor in your bedroom. You can hear them weeping and vibrating your name off the ceiling as they wept before God to keep you. They're gone. The people of God will be gone. There'll be no one to run to and get encouragement and strength from. One to chase a thousand, two to chase ten thousand, but there won't be that one you can go to. You'll be open game. My God, I can't imagine. It'll mean also, Lord have mercy, that all hell will be turned loose upon the face of the earth. I want you to turn with me to Revelations 8 and 12. I want you to turn there with me and look, and I want you to read with me. Revelations 8 and 12. I want you to realize what's going to take place. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten. 
and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars and the third part of them that was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise and behold I heard on an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice whoa 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 to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet and of the three angels which are yet to sound all hell be turned upon earth oh my god Everyone who's heard the preaching of the gospel. Everyone who realized that, my God, there's a time now that I cannot die. I want to die, but God won't let me. And there's no way that I can escape. The unbeliever, those that are left behind. Those that are left, they don't realize what's taking place. In Revelation 6 and 8. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell. Followed him and power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. One fourth of all the world will starve to death. My God, they'll be slain by the sword. My God, a pagan people will perish as the angel goes forth on the pale horse. Death. My God, can you imagine what's going to take place? All because they turned away from God. All because you ignored. All because you didn't want to believe the gospel. All because you thought you was all right. All because you thought you could get by. All because you thought you had plenty of time. But you didn't. My God, you didn't. Listen to what he said in 2 Thessalonians 1, 8, 9 Thessalonians. I'm sorry. In flame and fire, take vengeance on them that knew not God and that obeyed not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Why? Because you refuse to listen to the word of God when it was preached. When we try to cry out and try to reach out to you, you ignored, you didn't believe the word of God and the spirit of God. You mocked about the rapture. Listen to what Paul goes on to say in the second letter. The second chapter, the tenth verse. And with all deceitfulness, uh, deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God sent them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Is that where you're at today, my friend? Is that where you're at? Are you having pleasure in your own righteousness? Are you content in your carnal, sinful, lustful life? Just remember one thing from this old preacher. The trumpet of God's going to sound in the hour you think not. And if you're not ready, you'll be left. The Lord is coming to rapture. He's coming so soon, any moment before I even finish this message tonight. The Lord might take us home. Hallelujah. Oh, I long for him. I long for him. I love him. I want to behold him in his glory. Oh, this world has no favor for me. I find no delight in it. It's full of heartache and sorrow. I confess there's not a day goes by and by that I don't weep. Shed tears every single day of my life. For those that are lost, and then I see the impotency of the church. It breaks my heart because I knew what, what the church once was. And I can see the handwriting on the wall of the prophetic word that was spoken by Timothy. In the last days, perilous times have come. He's talking about the church. And we're there. And so many are ignored and they're putting it off. But I want you to know one thing. Be ready for an hour you think not. Come out the Son of God. And if you're not ready, if you're not looking, if there's a spot or a blemish or a wrinkle or any such thing, I promise you, my friend, according to the word of eternal God's word and spirit, you will be left behind. God is not coming for a harlot bride. He's coming for that pure in heart. Those that are looking for him and want to please him and find his favor. I hope that's your desire. And, and heart seeking goal today. If it's not, please seek God. Get a place to pray. 
I didn't say, I'd say come to church Sunday, but the Lord might come and you might not live to Sunday. Find a place right now while the Holy Ghost is trying to convict you. Oh, trying to grip your heart. Don't quench it. Yield to it. Yield. Yield to the Holy Ghost. He's trying to deliver you from judgment and damnation. Submit and yield and surrender. Find life and peace and joy and liberty, the abundance and fullness, the love of God. Please know that the Lord's coming. He's coming very, very soon, imminent return. God bless you. Thank you for your compassion and understanding in my attempt to try to minister this word. I know it's not up to par, but I just wanted to preach so, so bad. So I thank you and I love you. God bless you. Pray for us as we pray for you. And we appreciate you all of our hearts for your support, prayerfully, spiritually, financially, attendance, for all the kind words, for all the likes. Thank you for everything you do because if you were able to continue on the ministry, and God will honor that. God bless you. Have a good night.